Hello, it's Polish Paul VR. Welcome to the channel. We are here today to do some virtual reality news for all the headsets PSVR 2, Quest and PC VR because here we are all one big VR village. We've got some cool info about some cool games, so let's go. Before we start though, a quick word from our sponsors, VR Rock Prescription Lenses. VR Dog are customized prescription lenses for MetaQuest 3, 3S, 2, Rift S, PSVR 2 and 1, HP Reverb G2, Pico 4, Xreal, Pimax and various other VR, AR, XR headsets to correct vision problems such as nearsightedness, farsightedness, presbyopia, astigmatis and amblyopia. VR Rock also provide anti-blue light lenses to protect eyesight for players with good eyesight. The installation process is very quick and very simple and thanks to those lenses you won't struggle with glasses in virtual reality and you won't scratch your lenses. All the links that you need are in the video description below so head over there to order yourself a pair of those cool prescription lenses. It will improve your VR experience you can use code PAULVR to get yourself a nice 10% off of your next purchase. Ok, let's go and we begin in from a game that I'm super hyped for. It is looking awesome. This one is for PC VR and PSVR 2 players called Arken Age. The developer finally revealed the release date for that one. And it's coming on 16th of January. So just under three months away. It's gonna come out when PS5 Pro will be out for those of you who's buying it and it's gonna have PS5 Pro support. Also, if you're not a fan of reprojected graphics on PSVR 2, you can switch that off and instead of having 120 reprojected, you can have 90, 90 frames per second. Also, from other PlayStation VR 2 features, it will support eye tracking and dynamic foveated rendering, so it should look alright. It is on a longer side between 18 to 25 hours apparently. So all in all it's looking awesome. I was a big fan of, of their previous games, uh, Shadow Legend and also the Mervils, which was a small game but one of the first uh, VR platformers I ever played and I proper uh, completed it 100%. I would love to see Mervils on PSVR too, just for nostalgia reasons, but anyway. How big this team grew, look how they went from Mervils to what you're seeing today. Such a cool bunch of people, a small team with a big talent. I'm hyped as fuck and I cannot wait for the 16th of January. It's gonna be a very good, very, very happy day. Okay, and now it's time to talk about death reliefs and latest information about this game. Announced a couple of months ago, it was also announcements looking great or great on PlayStation VR 2. Should be, anyway, I don't know. But also what it looks like is the game will be coming with PC VR support as well without having to use mods or anything, it's gonna be native. What the developer says is the game releasing in January 2025 on PC, Xbox, PS4 and PS5, but the VR support won't be ready at launch and instead it will come a few days after. The game is in the vibes of Alien Isolation, of course there is no Xenomorphs, there is some Aztec uh, gods. Now, you are a dude, uh, a boy, a teenager, whose mother is about to be sacrificed for some strange reason and you're like, wait a minute, holy shit, that is my mummy, I must go and save my mummy. And you're going to do that by being stealthy and awesome and not dying and uh, just, just like that. So, graphically, this is, looks great. Developed in Unreal Engine 5, which means it's gonna have those fun, fun awesome next-gen features. There is no announcement yet about how long we're gonna have to wait for VR support when it eventually drops. But I don't care. I wait, I wait. January is gonna be full month anyway because uh, we get in Arcan Age as well. As we know, after March 2025, the VR support for PSVR 1 version of Minecraft will be dropped. Microsoft said, <laughs> see you later, suckers. Uh, but also they said same to PC VR community now because the PC VR support for Minecraft Bedrock Edition will end as well because Microsoft said, <laughs> fuck you, losers. But anyway, it don't matter because of course on PC you can have a Minecraft uh, Vivecraft, let's say, which is mod for Minecraft Java version. And also, of course, on Quest, there's a mod called Questcraft. On PSVR 2, 
there is no mod, there is no Minecraft, so it's sad days. <laughs> and let's talk a bit about Assetto Corsa Evo, which I cannot wait for. As we know, it's releasing in January as well. January gonna be awesome on PC, but also it's going to PSVR 2. The developer already confirmed VR mode for PC. PSVR 2 mode, I can see it happening. We just have to wait uh, for confirmation. But if it's working on PC and they actually done interviews and stated that they just needed to have VR in this game, I don't see the reason why they don't want to give VR to the uh, bigger audience. Especially that in the latest interview, they are speaking about the bigger audience. They saying, we want to reach a wider audience and we don't give up in terms of realism. So we are working on those aspects that might be, maybe were lacking in the first Assetto Corsa titles like career mode or something like that. Um, and elements of that give people more reasons and more scope to play the game every day. Assetto Corsa is 100% a pure racing and driving simulation, he explains, so they're not going soft on it, but definitely they want uh, this game to be experienced by as many players as possible, and uh, that's the latest on it. So it looks like um, there will be some extra game modes included. The game modes that are not only, you know, your online racing, uh, they are also saying the road mode is confirmed, road driving, so basically, this is the quote. Sometimes at the end of the day, you just want to drive for half an hour before dinner and you don't have the time to make a car setup or complete a race or to concentrate because you are so tired. If you just want to relax, have the pleasure of driving to customize your car or look at your collection, you can do that now. So you can just go sit in car and drive around environments and be like, oh, what a nice tree. Hmm, lovely sunset and shit like this. Nice. Some people like stuff like that. Whitewater VR Kayaking is out on PlayStation VR 2. This is second kayak title to grace this headset. It was already out on PC for a while. It's a photorealistic kayaking game with uh, very nice physics, uh, but to separate itself maybe from Kayak VR Mirage, they concentrating only on white water experience, which is, you, you know, that fast paced kayaking when the waves are there and you're like, Ooh, stop splashing me. Ooh, ooh. Um, so they, no, don't act like this. That's just too gay. Anyway, it looks fun. I didn't have a chance to play it yet. I saw the trailer is placed for you in the background. Definitely look like a cool game to spend a few hours in. Speaking about kayak VR Mirage, um, the white watering <laughs> is, I think, on their roadmap. So it might be with you in the future in Kayak VR Mirage as well. And now let's talk about beautiful Arkham Shadow. The game is awesome. It's out already to the great reviews, but obviously uh, it's released in kind of a very good state. But also there was some issues, uh, performance issues, crashes and, you know, just bugs in general. The patch 1.01 is already out and it addresses pretty much all of the issues. From the biggest issues people had was uh, being put in bad state. So basically when the game kind of like uh, saves after you like really fucking about to die and that's not good. So you cannot continue because how poor your character is. But also the crashes was fixed as well. Uh, the things when the cutscenes was playing twice. Little books here and there was being fixed um, also. The campaign uh, where a few players had issues there was fixed as well, UI and everything. So they addressed a lot, uh, pretty fast, which is good because this game deserves to uh, carry on being awesome and looks like it's one of the best VR releases so far this year and maybe past last few years. So yeah, great job team, uh, hoping to see more of uh, deliveries like that on all the VR headsets. Sticking to Quest. Bounce Arcade is now available to pre-order on MetaQuest and will be available on all the MetaQuest supported platforms on November 21st, 2024. Uh, if you pre-order in, there is 10% discount, so it brings the game from $19.99 to $17.99. In Bounce Arcade, players will enter machine and be transported into an immersive 3D table arenas featuring classic pinball-inspired mechanics like rails and bumpers while navigating thrilling level specific mechanics with multiple thrilling themed tables full of challenges 
players must strive to survive, unlock minigames and chase high score in next level action gameplay. And sticking to Quest but also PC VR and Pico, let's talk about Tennis League VR and let me just read this exciting press release, developer Another Reality and funding partner HIP are thrilled to announce that Tennis League VR is gearing up for the next major match with a launch on Pico devices scheduled for November 12, 2024. In addition to the Pico debut, Tennis League VR is preparing to rally even more fans with a Steam version currently in development, giving PC VR players a chance to step onto the virtual court. More details about the Steam release will be announced soon. With MetaQuest 3S out there, Tennis League VR is also rolling out a powerful update for the Quest Devices version, designed to boost multiplayer play and improve accessibility for new and returning players. Fan of tennis games, so looking forward to that one. And sticking to press releases and Quest devices, let's speak a bit about Augmented Empire. I've had an email from the developer and probably many people had it as well. So this is a game that released originally in 2017, so it's like 8 years old, but now it's making a big return on Quest 3 and Quest 2 on November 21st. And of course with Quest 3 having the pass-through, you'll be able to play it with the pass-through which is pretty awesome, uh, they updating the visuals and adding mixed reality features, nice one. And now coming back to the PSVR 2, let's talk a bit about Phasmophobia. The developers gave us the price for the game, which is a very nice price of $19.99. The game is gonna be with you just in time for Halloween. It had massive delay, I know it's happened, I think the developers themselves didn't expect it, how much it takes to port the game from PC to the console, especially with VR support, but they did it and PSVR players uh, could not be more happy because this is a big hit from PC, especially when it comes to VR space as well. The scope ghost hunting uh, just apparently feels great. Speaking about uh, stuff, <laughs> let's stick with PSVR 2 because the Bulletstorm developers announced that on the, well, wait, wait, wait. I played it on PSVR 2 and PC, but let's stick maybe to all the platforms because it's out on Quest, Pico, uh, PC and PSVR 2. So from the 29th of October, the Bulletstorm VR will be dropping its price by $10. So instead of costing $39.99, it will cost $29.99, uh, a good move by the developer. There will be some updates coming. Uh, when the game first released, the PC version was alright, but all the others had few issues. All was being addressed, plenty of patches releasing, released. So the game is quite fun now, but if you want to buy it, wait a few days, because you'll be able to buy it at much, much cheaper price. And now sticking to all the platforms again, and we are coming back to Exocars, an upcoming racer that's coming very soon, next month for PC and Quest and PSVR 2 will come a bit later. But what you can see in the background here is the brand new footage what the developer shared with us. And this showcases this asynchronous, if I'm saying this word right, if not, I'm sorry, I am foreign lands here. From the foreign lands, uh, from the far, far away kingdom. I arrived here and now, now I'm talking to you. <laughs> anyway, and this guy, this, this is works basically people racing. The game remembers uh, people's ghosts and then putting them against other players. Um, and that's how you racing. But it will be normal multiplayer mode as well. But as you can see in this mode, it's still looking pretty cool. And that's it for today, thanks for watching, if you're not subscribed to the channel then subscribe, it's always better when it's more of us. And of course let me know in the comment section what you think about the today's games, which ones you're looking forward to, and what you're currently playing from what I was talking about, and of course if you can, press a like and share the video, and for now that's it, bye.